Hi guys and welcome to the Craft Beer Channel. I'm in my spiritual homeland of Belgium once again for Tour de Gers, which is a biannual, biannual, every every two year event where all of the Lambic breweries and gerseries open their doors and you can have tours, you can taste their straight Lambic at the barrel and you can of course drink all of their amazing beers. Now we've done this event before two years ago uh, and basically we got lost uh, and just about managed to cobble some uh, content together between the rain showers. This time we've got a bus, we've got a designated driver and we're going to all of the Lambic breweries that you may not have tasted or even heard of before. So these are the guys, the really small artisanal ones where like some of them are just part-time blenders but some of the beers are stunning as I'm about to find out. Tour de Gers is an epic brewery crawl around the Lambic brewers of Belgium, and this year we're visiting the unknown guys. Belgian Lambics are one of the great man-made wonders of the world, a tradition so ingrained in culture, a connection so completely unbreakable that it survived centuries. Longer than that even, it is a distillation of thousands of years of brewing heritage. Lambic beer is spontaneously fermented, relying on wild microbes and yeast that infect the beer while it's cooled in giant swimming pools overnight. It's then piped into barrels and left to age for up to three years, sometimes over fruit, slowly growing sour and funky. Unlike many modern beers, where ingredients and inspiration come from all over the world, Lambic is very much a product of the place it's made, so where better to drink it than the brewery? After an obligatory quick trip to Cantillon, we set off for Girardin. It's closed, that was a good start. So the first stop in our Lambics you've probably never heard of or tasted is Detroit. Uh, so these guys are a brewery, they make their own wort, uh, just through there with lots of pretty amazing antique uh, equipment and then they've got the cool ship which you can walk over and that's where the spontaneous inoculation happens and we're here in the barrel room where they age their Lambics uh, one, two, three years, you can see the dates on all the barrels. Uh, they make the Chapeau beers, which are sweetened and flavoured with lemon, pesh, creek, obviously. But they also make an Erd Gers, which I've just tried. It's really bretty, really sherbety, like proper Haribo sweets. It's really good. Uh, but in here, I have, they've poured as a straight Lambic, a one-year Lambic. So it will be much sweeter, much less Brett character, because the Brett hasn't got to work, basically. And it smells quite a lot like apple juice. And quite strawy as well. It's completely flat, loads of puckering, puckering sourness at the back, but loads of sweetness that makes it really, really smooth. It's quite an unusual young lambic. It's not, it's not got any of that bread character, but loads of straw and grape and apple to it. It's quite complex. And that's the truck. It's really good on Tour de Gers. It's a bouncy castle if you're into that kind of thing, or your kids are. And it's a beautiful sort of area to drink, so make sure you come to this one. The next stop here is De Camp, uh, which is one of the smallest Lambic breweries. Uh, it's not actually a brewery, it's a blendery, so they get their work from Girardin, Lindemans and Boom. Um, it was founded by a former production director of Palm, um, with help from, uh, from Frank Boone and from our man from uh, Dry Fontaine. Uh, but he left the business and left it over uh, to the guy who's assisting him, and he's now taken on the whole brewery. He still works at um, Schlagmüller as well as a brewer, so he's a busy man. Uh, but they've got uh, about a hundred, well, less than a hundred uh, Pillsbury Kell barrels is where they age their Lambic in, um, and also now some champagne barrels, uh, and I'm drinking the straight Lambic from that, which has loads of champagne character to it, but it's also got a little bit of sweetness. It's actually one of the best straight Lambics I think I've ever tasted. Really smooth, really fruity, but dry in a champagne kind of apricot kind of way. It's beautiful. And uh, speaking of apricot, they have an apricot lambic, which is incredible. Um, and also, they make flat lambics, so not not gerses. They make lambics. They're not fizzy out of the bottle, uh, but that way they're sort of loaded with flavour. Loads of tannic, cherry fruits, or whatever fruit they're using. Um, really, really impressed with the beers that are coming out of here. Four is 
one of my favourite Lambic breweries, uh, it's Hanson. Stop number three was Gaviscon. Um, so we are here uh, in, I think we're in Dwarf, which is a place. Um, and Hanson's make, I mean, un under under the word craft beer in the dictionary, there will one day be a picture of Hanson's, because it defines everything. The menus are all drawn on cardboard in stark contrast to where we were at uh, Lindemann's and Timmermans. Um, and I'm drinking uh, their framboos. I'm not really a framboos kind of guy, but this is jammy and really, really smooth, considering the fact that when you drink like the Udbicha, the strawberry and stuff, it tastes like like parmesan and turds. <laughs> In a good way. So yeah, most of the beers that these guys put out are totally flat, um, and they don't expect them to ever carbonate, even though they're, they're still kind of changing in the bottle. Um, so really, the really fruity ones from here, you want to drink quite fresh, that fruit character is still really, really, like I say, jammy. It's a raspberry jam. It's beautiful. It's worth coming down. We don't know whether it's open. I mean, it's just somebody's house, as far as we can tell, with a garage. Um, but if you're in the area, definitely do drop by uh, and get all the specials that you can. Uh, off to our final stop now. <laughs> Final stop, and it's uh, well, not arguably, is by far the most famous of the breweries that I've picked. Um, but the reason I've included these guys is because everything has changed. The branding has changed. Uh, the site has completely changed. They were in this pokey little site near Beer Cell, uh, in Beer Cell, and now they're near Lot, I think. And this is this is a different world. The Bower Room is insanely huge, uh, and the range of what they're producing has hugely increased as well. All of them still with the they're they're very drinkable, but they're also all quite raw. And there's loads and loads of and complicated stuff going on. Um, now sometimes we talk about where wine and beer collide. I think someone's trolling me because this is, this is a red wine. Um, so this is called Robin. Uh, it is a uh, cherry, uh, they're essentially their cherry beer, their creek with 50% more cherries. And it smells just like a red wine as well. So we talk about it with the Flemish Reds, but this has, it's got that slight band-aid plaster kind of thing that a lot of the dry fontaines have, but then it's just, it's sweet cherry and oak, and it is just like a really intense, like, Ryoka. And then there is bitterness, and there's loads of bread and loads of oak, and it's dry as hell. So it's kind of finishing like a really oaky red as well. And you probably didn't even realise, even if you know Dry Fontaine, that they make this kind of stuff. So you need to come here, that's where they serve these specials. And there's going to be plenty of specials to go around, because that barrel room is huge. Um, guys, if you don't know Lambic, Tour de Gers is the best place to come to experience it all, and to see everywhere you go, you get the tour, you get to taste the original Lambic and all the variations. So it's a wonderful way to get into the world of Lambic. Uh, so give it a go, let us know what you find and what amazing stuff uh, you get to drink in two years' time. So awesome.